In this module, we're going to look at the basics of declaring and invoking methods in Java. Methods can be used for a variety of reasons, but one of the most common is that you have a block of code which you're going to use in several different places. So rather than write it out all over again, you can group it together, create one method, and then call that method from those multiple places. In many other languages, methods are actually referred to as either functions or procedures. Let's start by creating a new project. We'll call this one methods. And the first thing we'll do is put some code in here, which will compute the average of a small array of numbers. So here you see we declare this array, float array, called FA1, and it contains four floating point numbers, 1.2, 3.2, 5.9, and 9.6. Then we declare another variable called sum. Again, it's floating point number. We initialize its value to zero. And then we run through the array using this for loop that counts from index of zero to the index limited by the length of that array. And for each element, we add that to the sum. Then the average is computed by taking that total sum and dividing it by the number of elements in the array, fa1.length. And we print that out. So if we look at these numbers in the array, the average looks like it's probably somewhere around 5. We've got almost 10 there, about 6 there, 3 in 1. So they're spread fairly evenly. And if we run this program, we see that the output uh, average number is about 4.9. So it looks kind of believable. So suppose that we want to compute the average of another set of numbers. We could simply write out the same code all over again. So here is a new array of floating point numbers. We've called this one FA2. Notice this has six numbers within it. We reinitialize our sum variable to zero, and then we run through the array FA2 based on zero to FA2 length for the indexes. And then we add each of those elements to the sum again, and then we compute the average using sum divided by that amount of numbers. So if we run this program, we should see we get a slightly different value. But again, these numbers are spread fairly evenly between 0 and 10. So it's not a big surprise that the average is about 5. Well, the issue here is that we have almost exactly the same code repeated there, where we start by initializing the sum to 0, then we add to the sum each of the elements of an array, and then we compute the average by taking the sum divided by the number of elements. So this code has been duplicated. Clearly duplication has two problems. One is that we have to write it out twice, which is rather a nuisance. And the other problem with that is that if we discovered there were a bug in this piece of code, we would have to remember to fix it twice instead of fixing it once. So what we would like to be able to do is to take this chunk of code out and reuse the same code in both these places. And to do that, what we're going to do is to create a method. So the method is going to be created separately. You'll notice at the moment we've actually been ignoring the fact that we are inside this method called main. We're actually going to create this method outside of that, but still inside of the class for methods. So there we have the method declaration. Let's take a look at this for a moment. The first piece is we're going to take more or less on trust for the time being. In other modules we'll discuss what these mean, and we may find some variations on them. We're going to label this as public and static. Then the important pieces that we want to discuss right now, each method returns a computed value to whatever piece of code called it. And the type of the return value is declared here. So in this case, we're saying that when we compute an average, what we will get is a floating point number. So we declare the return type float here. Then the method's name is average, so that's what we're going to call it as when we need to invoke this behavior. And then we can specify arguments that this method requires to do its job. So this is information that's passed into the method from the outside so that it can do its work. Then inside the method, we do pretty much what we did before. We declare our sum variable of type float and initialize it to zero. 
then we go through the whole contents of the array. Notice this time we refer to fa.length. So that's saying whatever array I was given, iterate over each of the elements of that. And in fact, we pick up fa idx each time round and add it to sum. Finally, we divide the total sum by the length. And this statement here, return, says this expression, compute it, and pass it back to the caller. The argument to this, this type, must match the type that we said we were going to return up here. So that declares a method called average that takes an array of floating point numbers as an argument and returns a floating point number as the computed result. Let's see what it would take to actually invoke this code. All we have to do to invoke this is to refer to it by its name. So here the expression average fa1 refers to it by name and provides it with an argument of the suitable type. This call, method call as we would call it, is actually considered to be an expression of whatever the return type specified here is. So we can put this in and the call to average using fa1 as the argument will be representing a floating point number and that floating point number will be printed out. So the neat thing about this is we can call this twice. Notice the first time we say the average of the first set of numbers is and we continue the line here so it doesn't get overly long with plus average of fa1. We pass it the values in the floating point array called fa1. It computes the average and it prints out average of the first set of numbers is 4.9 something. Then we do it again. Average of the second set of numbers is, and here we call the average method using FA2. So it's the same behavior, but with a different set of numbers as the argument. So if we run this, we'll see that we get the same behavior and the same output that we got before from the pieces we had previously, these elements up here. But then our new ones, average of first set of numbers and average of second set of numbers, here, we get the exact same values because the implementation of the method called average is essentially identical to the code that we had previously just sitting in line. So that's a simple method declaration. Well, sometimes we might need more than one method. It's perfectly reasonable to have a variety of pieces of behavior that we want to create methods for so that we can reuse them. So let's create a variation on this theme. Again, it needs to be inside the class, but outside of our main method. So here we've declared another method. We're calling it partial average. And you'll notice that this takes a floating point array, but then it takes two integers, first and last. It still returns a floating point number. It creates a variable called sum and initializes it to zero. Notice that we can keep using the same variable name because the sum in this method is a different variable from the sum in that method. This is only visible inside the enclosing curly braces. So from this curly brace here to this curly brace here, this variable sum has meaning. In fact, you can see that NetBeans has highlighted it. When I put the cursor on there, that one, that one, and that one are highlighted as all being the same variable. These ones aren't. Anyway, what we do with this variation is we compute the sum just between the first and the last indexes. So for IDX is first, IDX less than or equal to last, add up the sum, and then divide by 1 plus the difference between those. The point being that if the first and the last were the same number, we actually would have computed the sum of one number. So we still need to divide by one plus that difference. So now we can invoke this partial average method. Let's have a look at the code to do that. Probably not a surprise. We have our print statement. It prints out the message and then it concatenates with that the result of calling partial average giving it a, the array of floating point numbers FA2 and a beginning and ending index. So if we run that, we'll see that it computes a believable average. 5.1 is probably somewhere about right. Remember, it's computing the indexes. That's index 0, that's 1, that's 2, that's 3, that's 4. So it's adding up those four numbers and dividing them by 4.
Well, one of the interesting things about object-oriented languages is that we can actually reuse method names if we want to under certain circumstances. So it turns out that really this isn't a partial average. What it is is the average, but the average of only a partial set of the numbers. And then we can actually call this method average. Notice I've changed the name here to average, here to average. They're both the same name. But the reason the compiler is OK with this is that it can tell by the argument list that they are different functionality. So if I change this also to average, you'll see it's happy still because it knows that if I ask for this average, it needs the piece of code, the method, that takes a floating point array and then two integers. If I ask for this average that just takes a single floating point array, it knows that it must use this average method based on that. This is called method overloading. And really what it means is if you need to describe what is essentially the same operation but with different input data, then you can actually use the same name. Don't do this unnecessarily because it could be confusing, but it's important to recognize that this is allowed in many object-oriented languages and Java is one of those. So in this module we looked at the basic reason for declaring a method, the process by which we declare a method, how we give it a name, a return type, and its argument list, and how we invoke a method, along with the mechanism by which we can reuse the same name known as method overloading.